Welcome aboard the virtual ship with Fellowship Chicago. While we can't have church traditionally, we can still be the church consistently. New method, same message. New platform, same power. New season, same God. Now, let's go into our worship experience. Hello, Fellowship family. This is John Jacob Burns here for your weekly engine check. This poem is entitled, It's a New Season. It's a new season. It's a new day. We will walk in integrity and everything will be okay. Like eagles, we will soar into new possibilities. Like eagles, we will soar into our destinies. It's a new season. Have a great week, Fellowship family. Good morning, Fellowship. Good morning, Fellowship. I want to say thank you so much for tuning into the virtual ship again. I really hope you know that we don't take your presence for granted. Fellowship, the virtual ship, y'all, you are our family. And I'm so grateful that we're able to worship God together again in spirit and in truth. Today is significant. Today is a holy day. All days are holy, but this day is special, is especially sacred. Today marks one year since we have worshiped together virtually. We started this virtual experience on the third Sunday of March, 2020. For a whole year now, you have not worshiped inside of this sanctuary or this building, but your homes, your offices, your bedrooms, your basements, your kitchens, your office desks have become your sanctuaries. Hadn't God been good to us? Hadn't God been faithful to us? Hasn't God been protecting us? Hasn't God shielded us? See, 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 this is a good place to put a praise right there because God has kept you for a whole year. Somebody ought to give God a one year praise for keeping you. Sometimes you were up, sometimes you were down. Sometimes you were discouraged, sometimes you were depressed. Sometimes you got news that your loved one wasn't gonna make it through their battle with COVID or other health challenges and yet God was faithful and yet God has been present and this virtual ship has been a source of strength and a hope for so many people all across the globe. So family, I wanted to pause at the top of this service just to remind us, just to set the atmosphere, just to set the mood that this is a significant day. If you can breathe, inhale and exhale, you are a living testimony today that after one year in a pandemic, God's grace is still sufficient. After one year in a pandemic, God's mercies are still brand new every morning. After one year in a pandemic, God has kept that hedge like he kept around Job. So wherever you are, praise him like you want to praise him. If your hands go up, let them go up. If a hallelujah slips out, let it slip out. But whatever you do, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been kept by God, say so. If you've been protected by God, say so. If he's picked you up, say so. If he dusted you off and gave you another chance at life, somebody ought to bless him this morning. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody ought to bless him this morning. Hallelujah. I said somebody ought to bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All over your house, give him glory. All over your house, give him glory. Somebody's gonna ask you why you're shouting this early. Tell him, cause he's a keeper. He's a provider. He's a way maker. I don't know how, but he did it. Don't know why, but I'm grateful. <laughs> Listen, and we're standing here only because Can anybody testify? That's your testimony today. Can I say it again? And we're standing here only because you've made a way. Come on, come on, sing it with me one more time. And we're standing here only because you've made a way. God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you 
blessing you for being our all-sufficient creator. Thank you for being the majestic one. We praise your name today. One year, you've proven that you are God all by yourself. God, one year, we did not know this time last year how we would work this out. None of us thought we would be in a pandemic this long. None of us knew just how tumultuous, treacherous, deadly this virus would really be. But God, in spite of it all and through it all, we've come to tell you thank you. All of our days have not been good, but on all of our bad days, you've still been good. And you've worked everything out together for our good. God, some of us are grieving still. Some of our hearts are heavy today. Some of our loved ones who started this pandemic with us are not here with us now. And yet, we trust you. We know that because of the Holy Spirit, who's been our comforter, protecting us, restoring us, giving us joy in the midst of sorrow, wiping our tears through the dark midnights, we can all lift our hands and testify, great is thy faithfulness. You've moved mountains, you've caused walls to fall, and with your power, we've seen you perform miracles. So God, while we are heavy today, while we have mixed emotions today, we choose to let our gratitude flow out of our hearts and we fill this atmosphere with some thank yous. We fill this atmosphere with some thank yous. We fill this atmosphere with some thank yous. We fill this atmosphere with some glory. We bless your name. We honor you, God. We give you honor. We give you glory. Nobody has kept us other than you. You walked us through the valley kept us through the storm, shielded us through the heartbreak, dried our eyes, held us together, and we bless your name. Hey! We bless your name. So now God bless this service, and may all that is said and done bring you glory and help us grow closer to Jesus. We thank you that one year later, we are still here holding on to your unchanging hands. Have your way in our lives. You've kept us for a reason. If we have a pulse, it means we still have a purpose. And we praise you for that. And we seal this prayer in the name of the one who's still able to turn water into wine. In the name of Jesus, let everybody who's alive and breathing and well say it is so. And amen. Now turn up real, real loud and let the devil know he tried it, but he lost it. Come, come, come on, come on, come on. Let everything that has breath, let everything that has breath. I'm going to say it one more time because I don't think you heard me. I said let everything that has breath. Praise ye the Lord. Enjoy the worship. Enjoy the worship. I'll see you in a minute. Peace, peace.
Well, happy Sunday Fellowship. I'm David Williams, and this is your weekly edition of FNN Fellowship News Network. This is the last week of Fellowship Bible Academy. Hey, we pray that you have been blessed, and hey, let's finish strong. Hey, if you are not in a class, no worries. Head on over to our YouTube or Facebook pages where you can stream our past services at any time. And make sure you share, subscribe, and like the pages. Oh, and don't forget, Refuel will return on April 7th. Hey family, great news. We have several new therapists that have partnered with Fellowship. If you have been thinking about going through therapy or just want to try it out, now is the time. The first three sessions are free courtesy of Fellowship. To sign up for individual, marriage, or family counseling, email therapy at fellowshipchicago.com. Available slots are filling up fast. First come, first serve. We are so excited to host our virtual new members fellowship via Zoom on Sunday, March 28th from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Central Time. This virtual event is for our new members to meet Pastor Sharp and Lady Bree, as well as learn more about our church. Please come prepared to have fun, meet new faces, and connect with your Fellowship Chicago family. Here at Fellowship, we know that supporting black businesses isn't a trend, it's a lifestyle. This is why each month we are committed to share with you quality black businesses you should be supporting. Check them out. This month, we're celebrating six amazing black female entrepreneurs. Brittany Gray is the owner of a multi-purpose operation that provides a variety of services under one umbrella. All in One is suited to assist in website redesign, digital design, logo creation, flyers, programs, custom apparel production, item personalization, proofing, editing, and more. The ultimate vision is for you to get it all in one place. Lynn Pins is Brittany's very own line of enamel lapel pins to wear for your creative expression. Dr. Ebony is a psychologist who created the first self-exploration and self-insight deck for black women. Dr. Ebony's passion is helping people break free from the mental, emotional, and systematic issues that are holding them back. She created My Therapy Cards to bridge the gap for the many barriers that make it difficult for people to engage in therapy services. Ideally, Dr. Ebony's mission is for the cards to serve as a tool to help you understand your problem areas and begin to do the work in areas keeping you from living your best life. Three Sugars Creative LLC is a branding and design business owned by Shani Aisha. They specialize in branding, packaging design, hand illustrated type, layout, and apparel design. Three Sugars' mission is to encourage, inspire, and sweeten the lives of all people by sharing love and life with all the world through their services and products. Three Sugars was created to fulfill owner Shani Aisha's passion for creating all things sweet and beautiful. Three Sugars' website is home for Shani Aisha's blog and filled with cute products and graphic apparel that centers black women and girls. Ivy's Tea is a hip-hop inspired herbal tea company owned and operated by first-generation herbalist Shanae Jones. Through Ivy's Tea Company, Shanae hopes to introduce more African holistic health remedies into the holistic health industry. Shanae believes that adulting is easier when you're in your best condition. That starts with getting the nutrients your body needs to perform well. Drinking teas and other herbal infusions are easy ways to nourish your body with the regenerative minerals they need to do just that. Glamland is a beauty brand that makes glam a lifestyle from the inside out. Glamland is a world where lashes, lip gloss, and fashion unite with a love, joy, and zest for life. Founded by African-American young entrepreneur and our very own Princess Jenkins. Jamaican-born, Brooklyn-bred, Kalia Wright is a trained architect who merged her love for fashion and architecture to pursue entrepreneurship. Crafting cool messages on t-shirts, birthing apparel brand, mess in a bottle. 
Kalia's mission is to help entrepreneurs figure out their mess. Through motivational speaking and one-on-one -on -one consultation, her goal is to sketch entrepreneurs' vision and curate a schematic design to design their ideas into something they can monetize. Kalia also has her very own blog and podcast that you can find on her website. To purchase any of the items featured today, or to apply to have your favorite Black-owned business showcased, visit our website, fellowshipchicago.com slash blackbusinesses. And now we have some special announcements for you. Check them out. Fellowship Chicago presents Jesus Week. Pastor Reginald Sharp Jr. welcomes guest speakers and artists, including Minister Diamond Gant. The same power that was displayed in the text is the same power that you too have on the inside of you. Dr. John Faison Sr. And even though you walk through loss, doesn't mean you gotta get lost. Dr. Gina Stewart. Every now and then, we have to be willing to get in God's face until the breakthrough comes. And Dr. Jamal Bryant. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Here's special musical guests Jovante Patton, Miranda Curtis, Rich Tolbert Jr., and Kiara Sheard. Come join us on Saturday, March 27th, heading into Jesus Week, for a special drive through and giveaway. We will be at the church from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m., passing out communion and palms for everyone. We also will have special Easter treats and gifts for our children and youth. Treats will be provided on a first-come, first-served basis while supplies last. Come out for a family drive through at the ship. Don't miss these events as we celebrate the Christ, the church, and the cross. Jesus Week, every night March 29th through April 1st at 7 p.m. Central on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and fellowshipchicago.com. We are praying for the families of Dr. Robert L. Threat, the father of Robert and Cynthia Threat. Mrs. Maybell Kelly, the grandmother of Timothy Kelly. Melvin Askew, and the passing of his mother and fellowship member, Miss Aletha Jackson. Deacon Bernard, and Minister Aurelia Jackson in the passing of their son, Lamonte Barnes. Rosetta and Robert Woods in the passing of her father, Mr. Nathaniel Barnes. Please keep these families and all those that have experienced the loss of a loved one in your prayers. Well, that's a wrap for this week's edition of FNN. Please check out the church website and social media pages for these announcements and more. And for real-time updates from us, text Fellowship Chicago, one word, to 31996. And as always, have a great week. Good morning, family. God bless you all. I pray that you have already been blessed by this worship service that is in progress. At this time, we pause for a moment of love and remembrance. It is almost unbelievable to think that on the third Sunday of March 2020 marked the beginning of our virtual experience. We began worshiping virtually on the third Sunday of March, and today marks a year of this virtual experience. And while we praise God for keeping us tight, while we praise God for allowing the word of God to still go forth, while we praise God that people have met Jesus, joined the church, still been connected to ministry, we also must pause and acknowledge the fact that a lot of us experienced loss within this year. It's been a year like none other. 2020 brought us a global pandemic. And right now in America alone, the number has reached 500,000 plus who have lost their lives to COVID-19. While I realize that every person that has lost their life, who's passed, who's, uh, who has gone into the light, as some African traditions say, who have arrived home, 
While I realize all of them have not been because of COVID-19, I do still think that it is wise to pause and give space for us to remember our loved ones, our friends, our sisters, our brothers, our mothers, our fathers, our sons, our daughters, our cousins, our nieces, our nephews, who were with us this time last year and who are not any longer with us on this side now. And I simply ask that as we move further into this remembrance, that you pause, take a minute, and although it may hit you in the chest to think, give yourself space to breathe, give yourself space to lament, because often joy can only be felt when we face the reality of sorrow. The Bible comforts us and reminds us in the 34th Psalm, verse 18, that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, that he rescues those who are crushed in spirit. And so the good news today is that even though weeks have passed and months have passed, that does not mean that grief has passed. And the good news is that God is still close to the brokenhearted. As we read these names, would you pause for a moment of silence as we honor these lives who still mean so very much to all of us. Ada S. Johnson, Andre Jackson, Andre Whitman, Annie Marie Johnson, Bernard Turner, Bernice Agee, Bernice Ledwell, Betty Green Ferguson, Brenda Summaries, Carolyn Jean Galloway Logan, Charles A. Dotson, Charles L. Holmes, Clara May Dotson, Cora Bivens Gunn, Danita T. Fleming, Daryl Wiley, Devaris David, Deacon Ephraim Pugh Jr., Deacon Jonathan Thomas, DeAndre Banks, Deletha Spencer, Dolores Farr, Denise Woodard, Dorether Westbrook Datzler, Douglas Robinson, Dr. Raymond W. Ransom, Estella Watson, Faith Renee Evans, Felton E. Hill, Flora Calvin, Frank Stevenson Jr., Glenn C. Gilmore Jr., Harold Irvin Jr., Harrison Hill, Howard E. Hill Sr., Houston Brown, Jack Lark Thomas, James Milton, Jeff Jackson Sr., Jesse E. Dixon, Jesse Lewis Estes, Jesse A. Stinson, Jimmy Carlos Logan, Juanita Scaff, Kendrick Woods, Kenneth Petties, Kim Scott, Lance Pittman Jr., Larry Luckett, Larry Jean Estes, Linda B. Shaw Pulliam, Lolita Green Dotson, Lamonte Barnes, Lyman Bates, Lindsay Stevens, Madeline Tina Franklin, 
Marie Robinson, Maddie B. Walton, Melvin Lee Britton Sr., Michael T. Shaw, Modice Rand, Mrs. Luther May Hollinshed Evans, our founding first lady, Pastor Patricia Ann Pitts, Pastor Zaki Hill, Philip Stanley Cooper, Priscilla Hill Holiday, Randy E. Mason, Rashad Wells, Sabrina Jackson, Steve Carr, Stephen Yarborough, Tina Carter Harris, Trinice Wallace Chambers, Tyree Rouse, Vanessa Weaver, Wilburn Salisbury Jr., Willie Mae Bruce, Xavier Gaines, Zenaria Shell. Family, I thank you so much for pausing with me to remember our loved ones who, who still mean so much to us. I ask now that you will pause for a moment of silence with me in honor of their lives, their legacy, and the love that they left behind. Let everyone say amen. For the families who are still coping with grief, to the families that are still met with the heaviness of the loss, may I pray for you? Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for this day, for this moment. Thank you for the virtual ship. Thank you for Fellowship Chicago. Thank you for every church member who is watching this morning. God, we come to you first to tell you thank you that for a year you have kept us together. For a year, we know what peace, peace really feels like. Thank you for sustaining us with your perfect peace. So many of us would have given up months ago, but only your grace, your mercy, your love, your strength, your joy, and the community, the community that you've put around us has held us together. So God, first we say thank you so much because we realize that if you had not helped us, we would not have made it this far. For one year, you've been good to us, and all we can say is we thank you. God, now for the families who are still met with the reality of loss, with the heaviness of grief, with sorrow that may grip their spirits, with a heaviness that they still can't explain, the tears may still fall, the memories may still flood their minds and their souls, but God, I thank you that the Holy Spirit is really a comforter. And I pray now more than ever that you would comfort all of the mothers, the fathers, the sons, the daughters, the sisters, the brothers who've been left behind to now figure out their new normal even after grief has visited them. God, we thank you that you are our strength, strength like none other, and it reaches to us. Thank you for knowing where we are. You sit high, but you look low. You're so attentive. You are transcendent so far above us, but you're imminent so close to us. And we thank you for that. Your word tells us that you restore our souls. We thank you, God, that somebody even this morning is getting their breath back. That as we remember, as we reflect, we're breathing again because we realize that you've still been good even when life has hurt us so bad. So to those families that need you, be a very present help in the time of trouble. And we seal this prayer knowing that peace is still possible. And we know that your strength is still sufficient for whatever season we navigate. We seal this prayer in the name of the one who's still able to turn water into wine. And those who believe that God is still able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think, would you say with me in Jesus' name, amen 
amen and amen. I thank you for taking this moment. I know it may feel heavy, but you just don't know how good it may feel to some family member to know that their loved one is not forgotten today and they never will be. So from Fellowship Chicago, from Lady Bree and myself, we want you to know we love you and God is still able to do more, 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 more than you ever expected. Be well. Keep breathing. God is with you. Peace, peace. Hey, family, again, God bless you. Welcome back into the worship experience. I'm grateful. I pray already already your soul has been fed. I pray that you feel the presence of God emanating through the screen. And I pray that when you jump on, you always get something. How about the last two weeks? Haven't we been blessed on the virtual ship? Two weeks ago, Lady Bree blessed us. Strategies for soaring sisters. Last week, our pastor Emeritus blessed us with this is my season. I mean, we've had some preaching going on, and I'm so grateful. It's no better feeling as a pastor than to know that when you are not preaching, that the people whom God has trusted you with are getting a solid word from the Lord. So I want to thank God for my wife. I want to thank God for our pastor Meredith for feeding our souls. Help me turn up and give God praise for them both for letting God use them in their own way. And I'm excited today to be able to share with you what God has placed on my heart. Before I jump into this word, it's giving time. Come on, come on. It's giving time on the virtual ship. We've made it to the third Sunday of March. I, I mean, this is just unbelievable to me. This is the third Sunday of March. Y'all, I remember coming back from school, meeting with my staff on a Friday, and, and half of the room looking at me like, now what we doing now? You said, what, we shutting down what now? And I remember us having an in-depth discussion of how we would shift from in-person worship to virtual worship. And it's just, it's just unbelievable that now we've been doing this for one year. And, and, and listen, I don't know about y'all, but I still get fed air Sunday. I don't know about y'all, but when I tune into the virtual ship, I'm looking forward to the experience from the music ministry. Y'all, give it up for the band. Give it up for our praise team. Give it up for our choir. Can y'all give it up for the media team? Come on, they've been holding it down. If it wasn't for them, you wouldn't see me. Thank God for our sound engineer. If it wasn't for him and her, you wouldn't hear me. Thank God for my staff who are behind the scenes. Come on, holding this thing together. We give God praise for all of them. Our security, making sure that nobody comes in here acting crazy. I thank God for our maintenance staff. It's so many people who you don't see that have kept this virtual ship. I got a lot of crew members. Come on, it's always a crew on the ship and I'm thankful for them. Hey, it's giving time and I pray that you would join me in giving your tithes and offerings today. We've been able to do major ministry even while we're virtual why because the building is closed but what come on y'all know it by now but the church is open come on let's so let's so look at those seven ways to give I'm excited to share with you in more depth about what we've been able to do down in West Jackson, Mississippi. I'm so, so grateful. Listen, y'all, we packed up an 18-wheeler to capacity. We packed an 18-wheeler to capacity filled with gallons of water, cases of bottles of water, and I am just so thrilled that in a matter of four or five days, Fellowship Chicago Progressive Baptist, Salem Baptist, y'all showed up and showed out thank you so much for sowing that's what ministry is all about you can't love the living water and not provide water so people can live in real life so i'm so so grateful for all of you god bless every gift and giver let nobody lack in jesus name amen 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 i am excited about this word today and i want to jump on in with the few minutes that i have with you to be able to try to express what God has placed on my heart. This is one of those weeks, I must be honest, uh, that uh, have been quite, you know, just, just, just quite overwhelming from a pastoral place. Very, very overwhelming week, very overwhelming. By the time you see this broadcast, by the time this message uh, comes into your home, you know, a lot of time would have passed, a few days would have passed 
but but where I'm standing right now, how I'm feeling right now, it's just one of those Sundays that's heavy in a way. Not not depressing, not overwhelming, not sad. It's just one of those Sundays where I've really had to wrestle with what God wanted me to say to you. And uh, sometimes I try to bring a neatly pressed shirt. I told my wife that sermons are like shirts sometimes. And whenever I come to the pulpit at Fellowship, I try to bring you a pressed sermon. You know, all the wrinkles are out of it, at least as best I could. I want it to be pressed and pristine and neat and organized. And I told my wife, I said, but this week I feel like I'm bringing a wrinkled sermon to the pulpit. And, and God is going to have to iron this out as we travel through this sermon together. So I invite you on a journey with me because I want you to feel this in a different kind of way. I want you to feel this in a different kind of way. We have so many anniversaries. We have so many anniversaries that have come up. Um, death anniversaries are, 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 are coming up where we where we started to realize that people were really, really going to be affected by COVID-19. I remember we all were apprehensive. We all were trying to figure out, was it real? And it didn't take until the first full week of this virus last year to realize that, oh, yeah, there are church members right here in our midst who were affected whose lives were almost lost and some who did lose their lives. So a lot of anniversary. How, how am I supposed to put all this together? How do you surmise or encapsulate a whole year of being in this pandemic? How, how, do, you, how do you honor this day with some level of holy respect and reverence uh, to, to, to be able to give people the space to realize we've been in this thing for a year. Uh, and not just that, but a couple days ago, I got a message. I got a message that one of our young men at our church, um, Lamonte, Lamonte, Lamonte Barnes, 20 years old, was murdered right here in, on the south side of Chicago. He's the son of Deacon Bernard and Minister Aurelia. And I'm trying to figure out how do you how do I bring all this together? I mean, I'm coming to this preaching moment with a whole lot on my mind. The death of this young man, Lamonte Barnes. And then after I went to the hospital with Elder Monica to stand with his parents after they viewed his body in the hospital, uh, the next three days I would receive at least five more messages of deaths right here in our church family. Deaths. Timothy Kelly, uh, his grandmother, Miss Maybelle Kelly, passed away Thursday and Friday. I got these messages that our own Minister Lisa Sparks recently lost her sister and her niece within a week. Rosetta Woods' father passed away, Mr. Nathaniel Barnes. And then Melvin Eskew's mother, Mrs. Aleth. Uh, uh, a leather Jackson passed and went home to be with the Lord. And then one of our newer members, Robert Threet's father, passed away, went home to be with the Lord. I'm wrestling with how do I approach this moment knowing we've been in a pandemic for a year. All of these death notices that hit me back to back death anniversaries coming up for me I've already started preaching if you ain't caught on yet death anniversaries happening and coming up the reliving the trauma and the drama of what happened last year and then my own grandmother my own grandmother who, who personally that that affects me because she's doing well she's healing but but I forgot that healing is painful too I forgot how, how painful and what a process healing is after an 81-year-old woman has not walked for nine weeks. Now she has to relearn how to walk all over again. All of this I'm carrying into this one. And then I wore my purple today and uh, to make sure that I didn't let you forget. I, I still know it's Women's History Month. This purple is the color of womanism. And, and, and how do I approach this moment uh, dealing with the fact that our women... 
our sisters still are faced with the problems of patriarchy and the systems of sexism? How do you bring in the fact that all over the news you hear of this controversial interview with Harry and Meghan revealing the racist regime and realities in Buckingham Palace over in England? And then on top of that, the vaccine, what are we going to do? All of the questions, all of the concerns, all of the misinformation, all of the mixed information. Do I get Johnson Johnson? Do I get Pfizer? Do I get uh, Moderna? Uh, how should I do it? Am I having faith if I do it? Do I not have faith if I do it? I talked to at least four or five brothers who said, well, if everybody else getting the vaccine, what I need it for? You know, it's just all of this mixed information. People are nervous. People are anxious. There is this cultural and ancestral apprehension that is legitimate because we've been used before as black people in this country. There have been projects done before and we were not given the upper end of the stick and, and there is legitimate reason to have concern. All of this has been flowing through my mind and here I go walking into the pulpit of fellowship praying and seeking God asking the Lord what do you want me to say considering this one year anniversary what do I say considering all of the death anniversaries and all of the traumatic anniversaries that are coming up for people six or seven death notices in a matter of two or three days my own personal family going through stuff with my grandmother with the negligence at her rehabilitation center and, and they really ought to be glad I'm in Chicago because if I was in Atlanta I'd be outside making a whole bunch of noise women's history month still faced with the problems of patriarchy systems of sexism Harry and Megan and all the questions that rise from that the vaccine should I get it should I not get it questions concerns misinformation and God led me to one verse it was the only verse that could speak through all of the things swirling in my head. And maybe you've never been there before. Maybe your mind has always been a calm pool. Maybe your mind has always been a placid lake full of serenity and tranquility. Well, God bless you. But I got all of this swirling and I'm trying to discern the voice of God through all of the things going on in the world. Because as a preacher, I, I try to bring to the pulpit what Kenyatta Gilbert describes the trivocal preaching t-r-i-v-o-c-a-l trivocal preaching it's prophetic voice it's a priestly voice and it's a sagely voice the prophetic voice allows me to speak truth to power what's going on in the world what do i need to address that's happening that affects us systemically then the priestly voice that's my pastoral voice that sees the hurt and the grief and the pain of family members that wishes that marriages would be mended and young people would stay in school to keep options that's the priestly side of what I do and then there's this sagely side where I pull in the wisdom of my people of our communities stuff like I know the Lord will make a way somehow stuff like what grandma used to tell us everything happens for a reason and what doesn't kill you will make you stronger so when I enter into this moment Kenyatta Gilbert in his book The Promise and Journey of African American Preaching says that the good preacher the, the, the responsible preacher doesn't just have one voice but you ought to in you ought to embody tri-vocal preaching prophetic priestly and sagely and I'm wrestling with God do I be prophetic today do I be priestly today do I be sagely today what do I do and God led me to one verse that calmed all of this down and I hope it calms you down too James chapter 1 verse 2 my brothers and my sisters count it all joy when you fall into different temptations verse 2 in the new revised standard version says my brothers and my sisters whenever you face trials of any kind consider it nothing but joy because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete lacking nothing then the message bible shouts me it says consider it a sheer your gift friends when tests and challenges come at you from all sides you know that under pressure your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors y'all listening but y'all ain't listening so don't you try to get out of anything prematurely let it do its work so you become mature and well developed not deficient in any way this 
verse, James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4, gave me what I need and all I want to lift for you is one question that this text and all that I just named for you has lift for me. Can I give you my sermon title finally? It's simply this, just one little question. How do I hold it together? Have you ever wondered that before? With everything you're juggling in your own life, how do I hold it together? I've been in a year in this thing. How do I hold it together? Balancing my family, balancing school, balancing my own personal life, balancing my own anxieties, my own fears, my own downright exhaustion with everything going on in life. I'm so glad that in the middle of everything swirling around your head just like mine, God speaks a word to let us know whatever it is that you're facing you got to learn how to consider it joy you've got to learn how to call it joy you've got to learn how to look whatever you're facing in the face and let it know that whatever this is going on in my life God has given me some holy divine instructions through this epistle by James the brother of Jesus that I've got to learn how to hold it together by counting it all joy now let me be 100 with you when the Lord first revealed this text to me this didn't make me shout no, when God revealed this text to me, this didn't make me bubble over with energy and excitement. No, when I read this text, I think I had more questions than answers. James, I know you're the brother of Jesus. I know you announced yourself as a servant of God in verse 1 in chapter 1. I know that you walked with Jesus and you are familiar with his ministry, but you got some nerve to tell us who've been in a pandemic whenever you face trials of any kind and consider it nothing but joy. James, who do you think you're talking to? Do you know everything that we've been carrying? Do you know everything that we're bouncing around? Do you feel everything that the people at, at fellowship on the virtual ship are going through? How is it that you going to tell us to count it all joy? Well, let me give you a couple things and then I'm going to rest my case. How do we hold it together? James gives us some insights on how to hold it together. And after this message, I hope if nothing else, that you have a better grip on your own sanity that you have a better grip on your own reality and that you have a better grip on whatever has been handling you can I give you the first thing of how to hold it together right here it comes naturally out of the text number one I want you to say it with me realize your holy identity go and say that I've got to realize my holy identity right there in James chapter 1 James said James a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ watch this now he's writing this salutation he's writing the opening of this epistle to the 12 tribes in the dispersion the new the new revised standard version says the dispersion those who've been dispersed those in the diaspora and then at the top of verse 2 he says my brothers and my sisters now don't miss this now he's writing to the Jewish Christians, those who have been exiled, those who've been dispersed, those who've been scattered. And the first question I had is why are they scattered? Well, you've got to go back to Acts chapter 8 verse 1 and it explains why he's writing to a scattered people. Watch it. Acts chapter 8 verse 1 explains that after the murder of one of the first deacons by the name of Stephen, watch it, a severe persecution began against the church in Jerusalem and all except the apostles were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria and so scholars suggest that this letter is addressed to Christians who had been scattered due to persecution in the area of Jerusalem or it's to congregations that have been established by missionaries sent out from Jerusalem don't go to sleep on me yet he says I'm writing to all of you who have been scattered in the dispersion somebody say dispersion yeah dispersion if you look that word up it is the action or the process of distributing things or people over a wide area these are a disconnected people these are an oppressed people these are a scattered people these are dispersed people these are disjointed people these 
people like us and are like hash browns from Waffle House. They're scattered, smothered, but they're still covered. He said, I am addressing the 12 tribes who've been scattered, but you're still my brothers and my sisters. Don't you miss this? He says, I know we all been scattered. They've been scattered because of the persecution in Jerusalem, but we've been scattered because of the pandemic in America. Are you with me yet? We're scattered. We're disjointed. We're disconnected. We can't hug like we want to hug. We can't do all that we want to do. And for a whole year, we've been scattered. We've been dispersed. We've been like them hash browns at Waffle House. Scattered, smothered, but here's your shout. You've still been covered. Because if he called them brothers and sisters, it means that a mother or a father still has to be close. And the reality is, in spite of how you feel, even when you're trying to hold it together, this is what's going to help you. You've got to realize your holy identity. See, when you know who you are, it does not matter what you're walking through. When you know who you are, you don't lose yourself when the storm becomes uh, tumultuous. When you know who you are, let the fire get hot. Let the water get high. Let the wind become intense because when you know who you are, you can look it all in the face and say, I'm still a child of God. I'm a seed of Abraham. I'm a part of these 12 tribes. I'm connected to a lineage of faith and I know who my God is. I know that I've said a whole lot and some of y'all still looking at me like, huh? Oh, let me make it real, real plain. Do you know that God is still your God? Aren't you glad that you're just not a creation of God, but you're a child of God and because you're a child of God, you've got some access. You have some inheritances. You have some protection. You have some coverage. You have some surveillance. You have some benefits because God is your heavenly father. And I don't know if that ministers to you, but that ministers to me because I don't know any good father. I don't know any good mother who just lets their children roam out in the street by themselves. No, good parents always keep their eyes or somebody's eyes on their children. And I know you holding a lot together, but you ain't holding it together by yourself. God is still your God. And I get why you still sitting there talking about, I just wish Rev would make a simple point. Well, let me make a simple point to you. Do you know who? God is? Do you know that God is still sovereign? Do you know that God is still able? Do you know that God is still a keeper? Do you know that God is still light in the darkness? Do you know that God is still able to keep you from falling and present you faultless? Do you know that God is majestic? Do you know that God is still sovereign? Do you know that God still has all power? He's not just God. He's my daddy. God is my heavenly mother. God is my heavenly father and because I know who he is I better understand who I am and I might be scattered, I might be dispersed, I might be oppressed, I might be laughed at but you ain't gonna laugh for long because eventually he's coming to check on his children oh somebody say I know my identity yeah there's a story about a little boy who got home from school and he was so anxious on this hot spring day to get from school and jump in the pond behind his home this was a rural country town where he lived he jumped off the bus and ran into the pond snatched his clothes off but what he did not know is that an alligator was already on this side of the pond he's swimming around minding his business and an alligator approaches this little boy and begins to grab his leg. The boy made it to the edge of the banks of the pond and his mother heard him screaming. His mother runs out and grabs his arm and there begins a tug of war. The alligator grabbing his legs. His mother won't let go of his arms. The alligator pulling on one side. His mama pulling on the other side. I want y'all to know that boy survived the alligator attack and it was the biggest news in town. Even at the hospital news reporters were begging to come in to interview the boy and they let one news reporter in and the news reporter said sir can you please just show us where the alligator bit you on the leg he said yeah I got a bad wound on my leg the reporter started looking and said yeah he really got you he said but if you think that's something you ought to see the wound on my arm I got great scars on my arm too 
and I have them because my mama wouldn't let me go. Can I tell you some? Some of your scars are not from alligators. Some of your scars didn't come from the devil. Some of your scars didn't come from the things threatening to kill you. Some of us got scars because your heavenly mother, your heavenly father wouldn't let you go. Somebody ought to park right there and give God praise for holding on to you. Don't you make it through a year in this pandemic and sit there with your legs crossed like you made it here by yourself. God held on to you even when you didn't have the strength to hold on to God. And I know who I am. My name is Victory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know who I am. God's been holding on. You, 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 how you gonna hold it together? You gonna hold it together because you gotta realize your holy identity. But then number two, how you gonna hold it together? James wants us to know you've got to reanalyze how you view adversity. I'm almost done. Ain't no need of you going to sleep. Here it is. You got to reanalyze how you view adversity. What you mean, Sharp? It's right there in the text. My brothers and my sisters, verse 2. Whenever, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy. Yeah. How? How, James? Because you know that the testing of your faith produces Endurance. Stop right there. Right there. Right there. Because the King James Version messes me up even deeper. The King James Version says, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. That's just a real complicated way of saying when you fall into trouble, you got to learn how to reanalyze your view of the adversity. Instead of you calling it trouble, call it joy. I know, I know. I, I, I didn't expect you to shout or say amen right there because you're thinking what I was thinking the first time I read it. You want me to call it joy? How do you want me to call it joy? Here's why. I'm not going to call it joy. But what I am going to call joy is what's going to come from it. Are y'all with me yet? I, 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 I might not like it. But I do like and I will like what comes from it. So when I reanalyze my view on adversity, I might not like it. But I will need what comes from it. And so I got to learn how to call it joy. Just like a pregnant woman probably is not going to call it joy. Uh, in her seventh or eighth month of having a baby. No, ain't nothing enjoyable about being pregnant in your seventh or eighth month. Come on, mamas, I wish you'd holler at me. Ain't nothing enjoyable about morning sickness. There's nothing enjoyable about some strange creature kicking you in your stomach at spontaneous times in the day when you least expect. Ain't nothing enjoyable about you not being able to find a comfortable place to lay down and sleep at night. And although it's not enjoyable, it's still profitable. Yeah, I'm talking to a student who's making their way through midterms and you have papers due and you've got to fight through financial aid to make sure that your financial aid finds first aid. you got to fight through all these papers. you just like me. I'm not enjoying being in a PhD program this year alone. This year alone, I've written almost 50 pages between the last two classes I've already had in 2021. Ain't nothing enjoyable about it but I can call it joy because what's going to come from it because while the mama might not like the birth pains she will appreciate the baby while the student doesn't like midterms and papers we will appreciate graduation just like a promotion that you prayed for you may not like all the weight and the added responsibilities that come with it but when Friday comes and that direct that check goes into your account. You might not appreciate it, but you appreciate what comes from it. And so I want to tell you today, can you reanalyze how you view your adversity? Can you learn how to count it all joy? 
And that's what I've had to learn to do over this pandemic. I've had to learn how to count it all joy. And I don't have joy because of what I'm facing, but because of what I'm facing is developing something in me. It's creating something in me. What is it? The text says it's producing endurance. Yeah, count it all joy. When you face these trials, count it all. Are y'all listening to me? Count it all joy when you go through these tests because although you don't like the trials and you don't like the tests, what you will appreciate is the endurance. That word in the King James Version is patience. That word in the New Revised Standard Version is endurance. What do you mean? It literally means in the Greek to sit underneath something for a long time. It's to be able to have the spiritual discipline to sit underneath something for a long time. And I was wondering how in the world is patience and endurance the same word in the Greek? Because whenever you have patience with people, you endure with them. Oh, some of y'all that got children, you know what I'm talking about. When, 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 when you tell that child, baby, my patience is running out. You, 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 you're basically telling them now, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to sit underneath what you're doing to me. But when you are close to God, I feel like preaching. When you've been walking with God, when you let the test do what it's supposed to do, when you let the trial do what it's supposed to do, the Bible says that what's happening inside of you is you are building your endurance. You're able to sit underneath something heavy for a long time. And can I tell you this? A lot of us are going to make it through this year because God has built up your endurance. A lot of us have not given up over this year because God gave you some spiritual endurance. Can I holler at just two of y'all and I'll be number three who can testify. I'm glad God gave me some endurance. I've been able to deal with some stuff I didn't think I'd be able to handle, but I made it because God let me sit under it for a long time and it didn't kill me. It actually blessed me me I'm stronger now I'm wiser now I don't let people waste my time now I needed to sit under this pandemic somebody walked up to me recently and said pastor you know you know what would we have done if uh, if the pandemic never happened I said I would have lost my whole mind if this pandemic wouldn't happen the pandemic made me stop the pandemic made me reevaluate the pandemic made me pivot the pandemic helped me give me time to go to therapy online the pandemic helped me get my house together the pandemic let me save some money I guess I'm the only one that can testify what I'm talking about the pandemic helped me not lose all my marbles the pandemic gave me a minute to breathe the pandemic revealed who my real friends are but the pandemic revealed what was really worth giving energy to and what 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 wasn't worth giving energy to the pandemic revealed who the real Christians are uh oh the pandemic revealed who your real church is. I met a lady a few months ago, walked up to me and said, Pastor, y'all ain't been keeping in touch with us. Y'all ain't been keeping in touch with us. Have you considered sending out a newsletter or something? I said, ma'am, what do you mean we don't keep in touch with you? What do you mean we don't keep in touch with you? Do you ever tune in to the virtual ship on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time or refuel at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time? Do you know we've had Fellowship Bible Academy Academy, do you know that every ministry has met on Zoom throughout this entire pandemic? Youth ministry, single ministry, marriage ministry, men ministry, women's ministry, senior care ministry. Have you been connected to? Oh, she said, I ain't been watching none of that. I was just wondering why y'all ain't been connected to us. I said, ma'am, go on. God bless you. Have a good day. If some folk, when we get back in the building, I hope you stay home because I need to ride it die people who love Jesus for real I've learned some stuff in the pandemic reanalyze how you view it and instead of calling it a problem call it joy yeah because it built my endurance y'all better not cross me the wrong way after all of this year it's some folk they may want to question before they come up at you the wrong way after you survive a pandemic it ain't nothing you can't handle 
You better tell the devil, think twice before you come over to my address. Prepare yourself before you come this way. I'm too prayed up for you to mess with me. I've spent too much time on my knees for you to cross me. I've worshipped too much. I've cried too much. I've been through too much. I've pushed through too much. This has all worked together. Somebody take three seconds and thank your God that you're better now. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, go on and thank your God that you're better now. You got more wisdom now. You're more focused now because the trying of your faith, it worked endurance. Do you know? Do you know how oysters are made? Do you know? Do you know that pearls are made inside of oysters? But have you ever really studied? how pearls are made in oysters. There are little slits inside the oyster that let sand in. And when this sand enters the oyster, it's like a foreign irritant. And the oyster becomes irritated by this sand that's crept inside the oyster. And so it releases a healing fluid to rush to the area inside the oyster that's irritated. And by the time the fluid gets finished healing the oyster from the irritation, a pearl is developed. But if there was no irritation, you wouldn't have a pearl. If there was no pressure, you wouldn't have a pearl. If there was no pain, you wouldn't have a pearl. If there wasn't no stress, you wouldn't have a pearl. Some of y'all ought to thank God for what robbed you the wrong way because God released the blood of Jesus, a healing fluid that rushed in and you're better now. I'm done. I, I, I'm talking to some pearls on the virtual ship. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm preaching to a, a ship full of pearls. Uh, I'm preaching to a, a Facebook page full of pearls. Somebody ought to say, my name is Pearl. <laughs> after all the irritations I've been through, after all the pressure I've been through, after all the pain I've been through, it's work together. I'm done, I'm done. I, I, I've held you too long. You gotta realize, realize your holy identity. You've gotta reanalyze how you view adversity. But can I give you one more? You've got to recognize your tests create Christian maturity. Woo! They about to get quiet on the preacher. They about to get quiet on the preacher. Verse two, brothers and sisters, Whenever you face trials of any kind, New Revised Standard Version says, consider it nothing but joy. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces what? Endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. Lean up a little bit. I need to tell you something. Uh, uh, uh. Some of y'all have been praying the wrong prayer. Come on, lean up a little bit. Lean up. I, 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 I know I got a lot of prayer warriors on here. I got a lot of spiritual saints on here. I got a lot of people that know how to beseech God. And you know that the prayers of the righteous avail if much. I know you deep in the spirit. Lean up a little bit. You've been praying for deliverance when you should have been praying for development. Because God has you underneath something that's heavy. Because the trial built endurance. But the endurance is about to build your character. Character is who you are when nobody's watching. Character is who you are when you've got the power to get away with it. And you choose to do what's right. And God, through all of this, was not interested in giving you more money. God, in all of this, wasn't interested in putting you on a bigger platform. God, in all of this, wasn't just interested in elevating your life or your family, giving you a promotion and giving you increase. And all of this stuff, all this materialistic gain, God said, what I've really been trying to do is make you grow up. 
I've been after your character. I've been after you. I'm trying to make you mature enough to be able to walk through stuff and not fold under the pressure. I never will forget last year when, when, when the first death in the middle of the pandemic was Reverend Clay Evans' wife. Mrs. Luther May Holland Shedd Evans was the first death in the pandemic. Her death was unrelated to COVID, but it was the first death. We couldn't all gather. We had to have a, a funeral with only 50 people in the building, and you all had to watch online. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, a month or a few days later, her daughter, Reverend Evans' youngest daughter, Faith, I called her Auntie Faith, went home to be with the Lord, COVID-related. And, and, and I remember talking to Auntie Claudette only surviving daughter of Reverend Evans and I said auntie how can I pray for you she said Reverend nephew pray for my mind she said pray for my mind she said I'm trying my best not to lose my mind y'all I don't know if that, she's not the only one. She's not the only one who either prayed that or should have been praying that. Because some stuff will strip you of your sanity. All through this ups and downs, being on the ventilator, watching your family members go through it, not being able to live normal lives. Some of our minds have been in trouble. And I prayed with Auntie Claudette, Lord, keep her mind. Lord, keep her mind. Lord, keep my mind too. Lord, keep her mind. Keep our minds. Make Help our minds. And I talked to her at the end of 2020. And she said, Rep Nephew, I got one thing to tell God. Thank you for keeping my mind. See, some of y'all shout over silly stuff. Some of y'all shout because you got a new iPhone. Congratulations. Some of you shout because you got a new laptop. Congratulations. But there are about 175 of us who a year later in a pandemic, we're thanking God that the trying of our faith produced endurance and God has kept my mind. I'm going to give you 10 seconds in your own way to lift your hand right where you are and give God glory for keeping your mind. I'm going to let you give him glory for holding your mind together. Yeah, I know you got money, but you ought to thank him that you still got your mind. I know you live in a mansion, but you ought to thank him for your mind. I know you have degrees. I know you have a salary. I know you've got a pedigree. I know you've got a pension. I know you've got a retirement package but what you ought to give God glory over is he's kept your mind because after all of this how do I hold it together I got to realize my own holy identity I've got to reanalyze how I view adversity and then I've got to recognize that my tests create Christian maturity can I ask you a question I want you to write it underneath this video underneath this worship service I want you to answer this one question. Has God made you better through this pandemic? Are you a better Christian after this pandemic? Are you a better mama because of this pandemic? Are you a better believer because of this pandemic? Are you a better preacher? Are you a better student? Are you a better wife? Are you a better husband? Are you a better son? Are you a better daughter? If you can come out of your trial and say, I'm better now then it wasn't a wasted test. It was a test that was needed to make you stronger. And wherever you are listening to me right now, can you put your hands together and praise God? Listen, don't fool me, don't fool me, don't fool me. I said praise God that you have Christian maturity. You're stronger now. You're wiser now. You have some endurance. Everything doesn't blow on you and just knock you over. No, you're able to look at it and say, I see joy. I see joy. I see joy. I see joy. I may not like it, but I need what's coming from it. I may not like it, but I need what's coming from it. I may not like it, but I need what's coming from it. I may not like it, but I need what's coming from it. I may not like it, but I need, I need, I need what's coming from it. I can look back over my life. Moments of rejection, 
moments of anxiety, moments of depression, moments where folks could have helped me and chose not to help me. Moments where I was lost. Moments where I looked like I had it together, but I really was falling apart. Moments when I wished I could have just slept in the bed for at least two weeks to get my energy back. I know I'm the only one. I'm just talking to myself now. Moments when I wish everybody would just stop calling me for at least three days so I could just breathe and the pressure. I look back over it all, and now I can say he was building endurance. 19-year-old Shaw is a little different from 30 year old Shaw. Yeah, some folk think they're gonna try me in my 30s. I said, you should have got me in my 20s. I, I, yeah, I went through too much in my 20s. And, and, and then Lord bless you by the time I get to 40. And you better not even cross me by the time I get to 50. Some of y'all in your 50s and 60s is like, nah, bruh, they might as well go another direction. Cause the longer you live, the more endurance you have, the, the less patience you have for stuff that doesn't matter. I'm so glad. I'm just glad. And some, somebody just say, I've got joy. Somebody ought to just say that. I've got joy. Come on. Open your chocolate mouth and say, I've got joy. Come, come on. Let the devil know. You tried to take a lot. But one thing you could not take. You could not take my joy. Come on, praise team. Yeah, I still got my joy. I don't have much voice left. But I, I, I do have some praise left. I thank you for my joy. Thank you for my joy. I may not like it, but I need what's coming from it. Somebody lift your hands and thank your God for joy. This joy. That's sagely. This joy that I have. I can't hear you. Now you know what your grandma was talking about. This joy. The world didn't give it. No, no. I'm talking to somebody who's been through hell. I'm talking to somebody who walked through hell with gasoline pants on. And you live to tell it. You ought to shout. I still... I got my jaw. I'm done. I'm done. I got my jaw. I got my jaw. Tell three people, I still got my jaw. 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 Gotta take this chemo. Gotta go through the radiation. Gotta take this insulin. Gotta relearn how to walk. I gotta relearn how to talk. I got a trick in my neck, but I, I, I still. Y'all just keep staring at me. Keep staring at me. I'm gonna find my help in a minute. I still got my joy. Go on to the funeral. Go on to the hospital. Go on to the doctor. But when the service is over. You can get on Facebook and say, I still got my joy. Does it take all that? Yes, it takes all that. You don't know like I know. Somebody shout, great joy. Great joy. I've come out of a great storm and I've come through some great pain. And I've wiped some great tears, and I have some great sorrow. So don't you get mad when I get my great joy. Can you turn to one person? Write it on the chat if you got to. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, the sermon title was a question. The question was, how do I hold it together?
tell them the truth is he held me together until I got it together now I want to hear I'm just talking to the people who made it one year through a pandemic I'm just talking to the folks that made it one year through a pandemic 500,000 plus people are dead and you still alive I'm just talking to the people who live one whole year through one of the worst catastrophes that the earth has ever seen I'm just talking to the survivors I'm just talking to the resilient I'm just talking to those who've endured I'm just talking to those who still have joy let everything If I was at church, I'd ask you, put your arm around your neighbor, shake them and rock them, rock them and shake them, tell them, neighbor, be not dismayed, whatever betides you, God will. I got to leave it alone, I'm done. Y'all don't feel what I feel. I'm in here looking crazy. Praise team. They ready to sing, the band ready to move on. Y'all ready to go eat your breakfast. I'm in there looking crazy by myself. I guess I'm the only one who's been kept. I guess I'm the only one. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. You brought this little wrinkled sermon to the pulpit. Because all of us so many times have been just like this message. Wrinkled. Not together. Confused, discombobulated. And yet, your spirit comes in. And makes it all right. Lord, I pray that as we work to hold it together that you help us realize our holy identity, help us reanalyze the way we view adversity, and then God, help us recognize that our tests help create Christian maturity. And so we can join in like our ancestors and say, everything's gonna be all right. It may not feel all right, it may not look all right. We might have some doubts about is it really going to be all right? But we choose to declare that it is all right. We, matter of fact, God, we declare it's already all right. Yeah, we thank you for the tests. We thank you for the trials. We thank you just like that oyster for the irritants that come in, that actually create pearls in our lives. Thank you for the friction. Thank you for the tension. Thank you for the stress. Thank you for the trouble. Thank you for the tears. Thank you for the challenges. Thank you for the setbacks. Thank you for the mountains. Thank you for the trials. Thank you for everything that we thought was working against us. Because the truth is, is working for us. Now, God, if somebody doesn't know Jesus for themselves, I pray that you would allow them to look at the bottom of the screen and email us, text us, so that they can meet Jesus for themselves. God, I pray that if somebody is flowing and floating through life and doesn't have a church home, that they will look at the bottom of the screen and connect with us either through cell phone or email so that they can join a church where they can go and grow. Thank you that you've given us a prescription again on how to hold it together until we're able to come out of it together. Thank you for your word, and we choose to count it all joy. Thank you that somebody's gonna get saved today. Somebody's coming to Christ today. Somebody's coming to the church today. And we give your name glory, honor, and praise. Let everybody say amen, amen, and amen. Come on, wherever you are, put your hands together. We want you to know Jesus. We 
want you to be saved, it will be. to bring the message to you. If you've really learned how to count it all joy, when you fall into different tests, when you've gone through different trials, you can say with us everything. used to say that's what the old mothers used to say they used to say I got a feeling that everything is going to be going to be alright and I Everything is gonna be. I said that 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 every, 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 that ain't the rules. Everything that's a thing. Everything will be. Everything's gonna be alright. If it has a name, then it's included with everything. Hey, everything's gonna be alright. If it has a name, then it's included with everything. Everything will be alright. Sometimes it gets hard. Sometimes it gets rough. Sometimes I get up. Sometimes I get down. Sometimes life knocks me all the way to the ground. Some days I don't have energy. Some days I'm not in the mood. Some days I just don't feel. Just don't feel that good. But I still believe it. That everything will be alright. Hey, hey, hey. Everything will be alright. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. Everything will be alright. Everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be alright. Come on, take me to 
church. Everything. Everything will be alright. Everything. 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 Yeah. Everything will be alright. Even the family. Even the family will be alright. Even the health pain A body thing, a marriage thing, a child thing, a parent thing, a sickness thing. If it's the thing he can fix it, 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 all things work together for the good. Go ahead and put your hands together. Come on, right there in your house. Go on, just rock with us. Come on, make it real big. Let God know you're glad you're alive. Expect. 
right now you would kind of sit there and just well let me give you a little sagely advice when church get real good like this and your hope is renewed and you have a little more perspective on what's been going on in your life one of the old sisters would holler out at the top of her lungs if I couldn't say a word I just wave my hands. So for the Methodists and Presbyterians, for the Lutherans and the non-emotional, come on, this for you right here. Just come on, get your praise on with us right here. Come on. If you can't say nothing, just y'all know I'm teasing, right? Y'all know I'm teasing. Come on, let me see them hands. Hey, hey. Come on, wave those hands a little more, come on. It's just a sign that you're still alive. Come on, it's just a sign that you're still alive. Come on, praise team, help me do it. Help me do it, help me do it, help me do it. Me do it. One more time, everything. Everything will be, everything's gonna be all right. Listen, we got to get off the virtual ship. I want to thank you for tuning in today. I pray that your soul has been blessed. I got to leave it alone. My wife and I were able to get our vaccine a few days ago. We took the Moderna, two shots. We had to wait a certain number of days between the first one and the second one. And I want to encourage every person connected to the virtual ship, lose your fear and go ahead if you're comfortable I want to encourage you to get the vaccine let me tell you two reasons why I came to this realization number one when we shut the church down in 2020 it took faith to do that it took more faith to close the church than to leave it open and in 2021 for me with all of the historical knowledge that I know about how black people have been mishandled, mistreated, and even misguided through our country historically. It took faith for me to get this vaccine, my wife and I. But I wanted to walk by faith and not by sight because I believe wholeheartedly in order for us to get back to some level of normalcy, that we need the vaccine, it is necessary. Well, do your own research. Soon I'm gonna have some lives with health professionals and doctors so that they can further give us the correct information so that we can dispel some of the myths and the fears that we have. But for now, I want you to move in faith. Secondly, to all these brothers, you know, that's why black women are being praised all across the country because black women are using their minds. Black women are not being selfish. Black women are always looking out for the community, trying to lead. Black men, we used to do that. Now we don't vote. Now we're the chief conspiracy theorists on everything. Nobody can tell us anything. I talked to three brothers and they told me, one said, well, if all y'all got it, I don't need it. That is an Americanized ideology. Stop being selfish. I didn't get the vaccine for me. I believe I could fight the virus. 
but I did it for my granddaddy. I did it for our seniors at the church. I did it for all the members when I come to their funerals. I don't have to worry about, am I passing on a virus in my body to people who are vulnerable and susceptible? Are y'all hearing me? And then secondly, there's another group talking about, y'all better be careful about what y'all put in your bodies. Y'all don't know what you put in your bodies. You smoke weed every day and you don't know what's in the weed. You drink alcohol every other weekend and every other day. You don't know what's in that cognac or that Jack Daniels, but you sit right there, turn up on a Tuesday. You eat processed food every day, don't know what's in it. You have Popeyes, McDonald's, Burger King, Checkers, eating all that fried food and trash. And now we come to a vaccine and you wanna talk about, y'all better be careful what you put in your body. I'm trying to help us understand Let's walk by faith and not by sight. I'd rather be six feet away than be six feet under. And I'd rather be fearful of a vaccine than be fearful of COVID-19. I choose the vaccine over COVID-19. That's my word. I encourage you to step out on faith. Do what you got to do. Fellowship is developing some partnerships in the next few days to bring registration and even vaccinations right here to our campus. So look out for that over the next two or three weeks. I love your fellowship. It's giving time. One more time. Look at those seven ways to give. If you've not sown already, you've got to believe that this test is working endurance and endurance is going to work Christian maturity. Stop praying for new stuff and pray for God to keep your mind because he is a keeper. I pray that as you give, you know that if you trust the principle, God's already got the promise taken care of. You ought to give by faith, knowing that all things are already all right. Thank you, Fellowship, for this one-year memorial service, this one-year remembrance service, this one year to celebrate that we all are proof that God is still faithful. We've had some dark days. We've lost some close loved ones, but God is still faithful. May your struggles keep you near the cross. May your troubles show that you need God. May your battles end the way they should. And may your bad days prove that God is good. I pray just like these 365 days that your whole life proves that God really is good. And may all the people of God say it is so. And amen. Amen. And amen. Have a blessed week. We in this thing together. We in this thing together. Everything. Thank you for worshiping with Fellowship Chicago on the virtual ship. We've always had a commitment of service, and during this season, we've increased our efforts to serve you better. We have made it easy for you to stay connected to get the complete resources you need. You can email us at info at fellowshipchicago.com. Call the church office Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 773-924-3232 and our social media on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For real-time updates, you can text Fellowship Chicago to 31996. We have exciting and informative resources throughout the entire week designed specifically with you in mind. Go to fellowshipchicago.com for the full schedule. Until we dock again, thank you for your prayers and financial support of Fellowship Chicago. Remember, we are in this together. Shut your spirit.